I bought this little house with just over half an acre in Sweden one year ago. Okay, a year and a couple of months ago. I came here with a backpack on foot and since a few things have changed, I bought a bike and ordered a load of timber and well I tried to renovate this house and also improve the outside a little bit. The renovation didn't quite go the way I thought it would go and there were a few issues that took a bit longer to correct but I will explain all of that. This video is going to show you my one year progress with everything I've renovated and built this past year. Welcome to my little home. This is my project. I'm from London and I work as an interior designer. I always imagined buying my own small property. I thought it would be a dingy studio apartment somewhere on the outskirts of London in a bad neighbourhood. But somehow I found myself finding this cheap property in Sweden and moving into the forest. But that's just geography. Essentially, I'm renovating a little house. So I used to design very expensive interiors and now that I'm here, I realise that I can only afford very cheap interiors and also that I'm very much not a builder. I've never done any DIY myself, but I figured building is a skill that you can learn and rustic is a look. So welcome to my rustic cabin in the woods. Let me give you a quick overview first. This is my tiny piece of land. There's the main house right in the middle. In the back there's a shed with an outdoor shower and an outhouse. There's a water pump house and I have a small guest house in the front. This summer I built a vegetable garden and a greenhouse right here. This was the interior when I first got the keys. This is the front entry where the house splits up into two sides. The west side leads to the living room and a back room which I used to call the blue room because, well, it was blue. On the other side we have a smaller room and a kitchen in the back. The kitchen and a blue room are part of an extension that was done in the 50s. And these are my plans for the existing interior. I wanted to open everything up a little bit more and I began by turning the back rooms into one larger kitchen with a lobby area and a new toilet. I planned a lot of built-in furniture and joinery to live out my dreams of making some sort of affordable version of a modernist masterpiece. The kitchen will have a large countertop the small front room will have a long desk and a library and the living room will have a built-in bunkette, which can also be used as a sleeping area. Since the ceilings are relatively low, I want everything to be calm, use a lot of wood and really unify the space by making it one cohesive and thought through design, as opposed to just painting the walls and filling it with lots of furniture. Initially, I had high hopes of converting the attic into a few rooms and building a separate bathroom building on a plot. But after a few months of living as a builder, I decided to tone down my ambitions for the time being and just focus on making the ground floor a really nice space for myself first. So a few weeks after I moved in, my parents actually came over for a few months to help start um, on the biggest jobs and my parents are not DIY people at all but it was really great to have them help me start on, on some of the bigger projects that really needed a bit more manpower. <laughs> One of the most pressing issues was a leak in the blue room which ended up being a lot bigger than I anticipated. The roof had been installed too short and all the timber underneath had rotten through. I ended up taking out the entire back wall, the windows, the ceiling joists and rebuilt everything. I also took out the interior wall between the two back rooms, the blue room and the kitchen and I reused the timber to build the exterior wall, which was really useful. I put in a small window as I planned a new indoor compost toilet and repurposed the old windows on the kitchen side where I replaced the third exterior door for a window. At this point, I was really happy to mostly be done with the leak apart from having to replace a small section of flooring. 
but unfortunately I had a few more troubling times ahead, but we'll get to that later. The first few months my priorities were to make this cabin winterproof. So this house used to be lived in full time. It was built sometime in the early 1900s and it's a log cabin so the walls are thick, there's logs inside, it's insulated in that way. But it's been used as a summer house for the past years. So it's not winterized at all. And one of the biggest jobs that I knew I had to do immediately if I was going to stay during that first winter was to winterproof the water pipes. So while my parents were here, my mother ended up digging this entire 25 meter trench, almost three feet deep. She pulled out huge rocks so we could bury the pipes. Now three feet isn't actually deep enough for the pipes not to freeze during winter, but the ground was too rocky to go any deeper. So I got a heating cable to run the entire length, insulated it, pushed it through a giant yellow pipe and finally buried it. We were so happy to be done with that. At this point, my dad had also installed gutters and extended the roof in the back so the leak was stopped. Summer was over, my parents were both miserable and then they headed home and left me on my own. I was back to living my dream, alone in the countryside, in a new country and a house that was kind of cute when I first bought it and which had now turned into a huge, miserable building site. Oh, and by this time it was also getting cold. So this is my first building. <laughs> yes, it is. And this is what it looks like initially. It was auto now and I made an order for a load of timber and construction materials. Figuring out exactly what I was going to need to get through winter was quite the task. I don't have a car or a drive and delivery is quite pricey so I had to be really precise. Once I received the materials I began to work on a water pump house. This was a sad little shed stuffed with insulation material and wasp nests. I needed to turn this into an actual insulated building that I could heat during the coldest months. I was told that I had until the beginning of December when the snow would stick, so I spent every waking moment building this little house. I also started working again, I was working remotely from home, so I was running back and forth between work and building the shed while it just got colder and colder. Initially I thought I could just take the old shed and build a new wall around it, but in the end I pretty much took out the entire structure extended the footprint and build a new shed using a mix of materials. I was doing everything on a budget, so I tried to reuse the old shed, took off the rotten parts, used old pieces from the house, and also added some new timber. seems quite happy. So this is it. It's really not perfect. I notice it gets a lot of moisture on the inside. Another thing is that these doors were made using new timber but actually the timber has started to warp so now the doors kind of warp out and they don't really shut properly anymore. Other than that, during winter it worked really well. Last year I have a heating cable that runs in here and I also have a small radiator I didn't put in a floor or a ceiling, but it did insulate everything. I really needed to save money, so it's all been made using repurposed materials from the house, from the old shed, and some new materials. I do have thoughts of adding an outdoor shower onto this building. I'm thinking down here. When I first got here, I always thought that I would build a separate bathroom building, which seems like 
way too much right now. But an outdoor shower which is linked to the water supply here would be really useful. The only downside is that there isn't really all that much sun here. It, this bit gets a lot of shade from the trees. Because not having to haul buckets to the outdoor shower would be quite a luxury and you know there's a water supply right here it could be relatively easy to work out so when i finished this outhouse i was so ready to start working indoors it was probably december and it was cold <laughs> but i was so happy to finally move inside and actually do what i came here to do which is to renovate the interior of the house. Unfortunately though this didn't quite turn out the way I imagined and I had a couple of hiccups. I knew the leak had impacted some of the timber flooring and I'd ordered new timber to replace this but the problem turned out to be a bit bigger than that. Remember when I said that if there was a lot more rotten parts of this then that would be an issue? Well, that's where we're at. Yeah, I had to replace the entire section of floor, including the floor joists. Basically, I lived with a giant hole in my floor for quite a few months. And because I hadn't expected the damage to be this extensive, and I hadn't ordered enough materials for this purpose, I had to get a little bit more creative with the floor build-up. Honestly, it wasn't easy to get out there in the morning when it was literally freezing inside, and I had to continue working in this hole in the floor. It also meant the mice came into my kitchen every night. <laughs> And I had to start storing all of my food in a small room I was sleeping and working in. But finally putting in the final floor, new ceiling and walls felt amazing. This is the first room in a house that I finished. Well, the lobby isn't quite finished just yet, but the walls are clad in timber and I put in all the flooring and it is such an improvement since the hole in the floor. This is a compost toilet so it doesn't require any water and the setup is very simple. I just built a tiny cellar in a crawl space for a pee bucket and put in a basic compost toilet. It's time to reveal my bathroom. Yes, it's dark and I really like it. For those wondering, there's no sink because I didn't want to run more pipes through the kitchen for plumbing. This project included a lot of firsts. I used plasterboard for the first time, painted everything a dark green, made my first MDF joinery unit, and I built my first door. Oh, and yeah, the, the window, I built it and it has, well, it, it has shutters instead of glass. Okay. I put shutters on this toilet window. 
Is it supposed to be glass? Probably. Is this easier and cheaper than glass? This window is one of the first things I made and I was entirely overwhelmed with this project. I couldn't find where you buy windows. But I could find wood. <laughs> and I really like the idea of doing something different and doing shutters. And it's a compost toilet so you need them to open for ventilation. So I thought shutters could be a really good idea. Or it could be a really bad idea but it could be something easy that I could implement myself. So instead of a window I have shutters. And yes it gets really cold but that entire section <laughs> gets cold. I mean, I don't have a fireplace, so everything gets cold. I'm quite easygoing. This is a winter toilet mainly, and I don't expect it to be warm because it's not going to be a room that you can heat anyways without huge cost. So it's just going to be a cold room, and to me that's absolutely fine because the alternative is going to the outhouse, which is also cold. Oh, and then there's the question of the, the prison bars. This is an architectural detail I wanted to try out and I think when I start working on doing the exterior for the rest of the house it might tie in really well. I definitely want it to be a little bit more minimalist so yeah I just wanted to try this detailing running the slats in front of the window and I mean I, I don't mind it. I kind of like it. I don't know how I feel about it. I might very well at one point take it out, put it in a window, but I think it works right now. I'm happy. They're high quality shutters. Yeah. So my latest project is this kitchen and I guess I'll just show you what I did. Being able to finally finish the kitchen was something that I'd been waiting for for so long. I built a small freestanding section when I first did the new plumbing, but it was badly made and extremely unstable. I was only able to fix it and finish the entire design when I put in the walls and flooring in this entire area. Making the joinery is something that attracts me most to this project, so getting to this point felt really good. very basic but it has some interesting detailing that are Japanese inspired which make the unit feel a lot more refined. me make this kitchen most recently and what I didn't show is the other side of the room which is this <laughs> and it's unfinished this is where the fridge lives and I'm building a built-in shelving unit for this side so this fridge will be sort of built in and there will be some shelving so this shelving will be right here yes this is the corner I don't really show because it's not very attractive I actually just put some timber planks around this little beam. 
the shelving will be at the same height as the built-in stove and then it's going to be full height around the fridge and on this side it will be a place where I can put my coat, it will be like a wardrobe. I'm going to have curtains in between the lobby and the kitchen and I'm also going to make a little recessed shelving unit within this underneath the stairs cupboard which is terrifying right now so I put plastic in front of it there was a door and I took out the door these are the projects that are coming up next I want to make this kitchen kind of finish it none of the trims in this area have actually been finished because I don't have enough of the woods. Other than this, I haven't actually done anything indoors, which sounds very disappointing since I've been here for a year. And I genuinely thought that I would be finished building a lot of the indoor by now, but everything was just taking so long. Building that water pump house outside took up a lot of my time and just fixing the floor in here was it was quite exhausting. I'll show you the other rooms anyways. This is where I work and sleep and live and eat and do everything. I haven't done anything to this room. I just put some furniture in it to, to have a place to live. It's a little bit like a dorm room and it hasn't changed. I, I did put in some shelving that I made and that really helped to just get, get all my stuff off the floor. This room is going to be all woods just like the rest of the house and it's going to be my next project after the kitchen which I'm really excited about. I don't know how to, how to match the um, living and renovating during winter in the same room. But yeah, I'm hoping that I can make a start here. I'm planning on putting a desk along the one side, uh, built-in banquette seating along this back here, and then on the other wall I want to have a little built-in bookcase. It's a lot of projects for me. The last room in the house is right here. Yep, <laughs> this is my timber room. This room is going to be my last interior room, I think. Yeah, this this room is has a lot of wood in it. <laughs> this wood will be turned into pretty things. A lot of it is for the flooring for the entire house. I'm going to do another built-in cabinets and bench seating along the sides of it. I actually have someone come in about a month to check the status of the fireplaces. It's very expensive to get someone in. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, they're going to tell me whether they can be approved. I'm assuming they're not going to be approved because I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But at least then they can tell me what needs to get fixed to get the fireplaces up and running. It is a cost that you know, just didn't fit in my budget, so I'm going to have to run my um, heating on electricity. I, I did speak to someone about the fireplace, the cost for just fixing the chimney, the bricks that are falling down, was absolutely insane. Just like last year, I will just be heating the one room that I sleep <laughs> and live and work in, and uh, the rest of the house is going to be cold. I will keep you posted on, on what happens, um, what's actually wrong with it, once I find out. This summer I actually ended up doing quite a lot outside. I wasn't planning on prioritising the garden at all because I'm basically just interested in renovating the house but living here outside got me really excited to actually start growing my own vegetables and well that meant that I had to 
make a garden. I thought I would take the easier route and make some raised garden beds using the Hugo culture ideas. I have lots of wood lying around the property so I thought it would be easier than to till the area instead. Of course this wasn't really the case, <laughs> getting the wood from all over the plot, dealing with unexpected problems like a slight infestation of ants, I had to abort my initial idea of using logs and made a raised bed from leftover pallets instead, although then I did make the log one anyways and finally I made a third one with my mum to, you know, plant seeds so late in the season that they would have no time to actually bear fruit. But that's okay because everything here is an experiment anyways. So I made these three garden beds in the end and... I did sow a lot of the seeds too late and my harvest hasn't been great at all. Right now I think we had a first frost so all of these plants are not looking happy at all but it's been really nice to see them grow anyway so I've had a couple of vegetables. Nevertheless it's been it's been really fun to, to try it and next year I'll know a lot more about about what to do. And let's not forget me making this masterpiece behind me here, which is my moderately failed greenhouse. After making the first few vegetable beds, it seemed only natural to make a greenhouse to extend my growing season. I made it using the least amount of wood I could get away with, so the shape is a little unusual. It's essentially a giant version of a small greenhouse with little windows you can lift up. But the space inside turned out to actually be quite nice and the only downside is that it doesn't actually function as a greenhouse. Guess what? It's really nice and cool in here. And this plastic isn't the right plastic. I should have just bought specific greenhouse film, which I will fix it next year. Next year, this greenhouse, which is not a greenhouse because I've got the wrong plastic, will be a greenhouse. And that's exciting. I do have a couple of plants in here. I've got some tomatoes. But the greenhouse doesn't really function the way that it should function. What I also did is make a compost pile. Which looks like a throne. Next year I want to make a couple of terraces, like a couple of platforms to sit on. Obviously I want one around the house, like a little veranda but I'm thinking about creating another platform on this little hill which is right next to this greenhouse area. This little raised area gets really nice light and I can just imagine creating a walkway from the house down there and then having a little veranda around the house and this walkway that goes to this platform up here next to the garden. I think that would be super cute. Anyways, that's next year. So this year I actually did build something outside which has turned into probably the most practical DIY building solution ever and I'm so happy I spent the time doing this. This bench has been so amazing to use. I would 
teacher really liked the idea of having like a little screen, like a, a little roof on it, so I could work here during bad weather. But even just having this gives me such a good workplace. And especially sanding and cutting woods. There are a couple of areas I haven't touched at all. For example, the guest house. I have amazing plans for this guest house. But um, it's like its own little standalone project, which I think I will tackle at, at one point. Yep, that's a lot of mystery. Something else I haven't changed are the buildings at the back of the plots. So I haven't touched the outhouse, or the shed, or the outdoor shower. Oh, it's a nice usable space. And this is my shower. It's nothing luxurious, but it's everything you need. Yet. So that was my first year being a builder. Uh, honestly, I thought that I would have finished so much more by now, but as I've come to realize, and as many other DIYers will say, Things take a lot longer than you anticipate and also I work, I work from home so some weeks I'm not really able to do much at all and I am very happy that I managed to finish the kitchen. I mean the rest of the house looks like this so we'll be, we'll be busy for a while. So in the coming months or the coming winter, my first project is going to be to make the shelving in the lobby and kitchen areas. It will be really nice to have that done. So the kitchen is kind of completely, completely finished. After that, I really want to move into my little room in which I live and start building the desk. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how far we get on with that. Obviously living in a place that I'm renovating during winter isn't ideal, so we'll see how that goes. But I have most of the materials for that, so it's most convenient to do that area. And then next summer it's outside painting, making platforms, terraces, finishing the greenhouse, finishing the fence, and maybe, maybe even redo the guest house. I really like the guest house to be a little project on its own and make that really nice and comfortable for someone to live there for a little bit longer. It's not going to like have plumbing and have a bathroom or anything, but to make it as comfortable as possible and cozy as possible. So we'll we'll see about that. I, I probably have to rip out all the walls and insulate it. I'm assuming it's not insulated and I would definitely add that if I were to put effort into into actually redoing that. So yeah, um, that's it. I think I think that's my year updates. That was my first year. I did I did a lot of I made a wall. So come along if you so wish. I will be making videos and keep you updated. Mm -hmm.